Greetings, traveler. Beast, demon, murloc, pirate, undead. For anyone wondering, we are going to be looking at one of RDU's games. This is uh, essentially a new series that I've started. All the players have given permission, of course, and yeah, it's just been super fun. So we see that there's an ETC pick. ETC's recently got an armor boost, went from five to eight, which is more reasonable because five is really low in the quest meta. So RDU has an overlay that shows the types that are in rather than the types that are out. So that's good to know, right? So we can see pirates in, that's why the pirates over here. So it is a beast and a murloc lobby. In this meta, in the quest meta, that is something to look out for because the chances they're gonna be playing either beast or murloc are really high. All right, so this is just a regular ETC economy opener. Play it, slam it, here we go. We're definitely slamming the buddy button. Okay, and gets the Soul Keeper. Whoa, okay. That is absolutely not what I would have guessed. The Eternal Knight start here. Valuing that very highly, I like Surat or Tad way more. So I guess what RDU is thinking here is that he likes the Eternal Knights and the Surat, but it's better to start off with the Eternal Knight to scale it. And especially because he has the Soul Keeper, he can be a little bit uh greedier with that approach because the chances that you're gonna lose with a soul keeper are very low it's a super high tempo minion at this stage of the game but that's something that i don't really have a single eternal knight that i don't value super highly so probably gonna hero power again then uh, oh summon 25 is very good tombs <laughs> uh insta slam okay rylak is in so that means we can play beast uh, or Murloc super efficiently because you already have tombs and your requirement is super uh, super doable. Wow, that's very quickly that he saw that. All right, so takes a tag. Oh, I guess he did the check on how many types he would have when he was selecting the tag, right? Yeah, okay. Hop, 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 hop. And then takes a Surat instead of the Mana Saber. Even though the Mana Saber is slightly better for the quest, you don't really need it. I would say the argument for that is the Surat is stronger, but he's he's doing so well that he doesn't need to rush the tombs. So you may as well get the better card than the Mana Saber. And um, I don't think he's getting Tomb Sporbat, right? He's getting Tombs Rylak. There is some argument. I don't know. You'd have to really do the math to look at, okay, is this Mana Saber going to get it faster than my Surat? Because if that's the case, you might miss out on one turn of Rylak value. But that is, you know, that's difficult to do. That's, uh, and a lot of that is honestly just pure speculation. Because you don't, oh, Lieutenant's pretty good here. But he might want Egg. This is actually good to see. I'm, I'm curious. Egg is more value, obviously. And with Tombs, the Egg is going to be great. Stormpike Lieutenant opens up buying big minions from the shop. This is not an easy call. Yeah, he's taking a moment here. I don't think you can really go wrong with this. The Stormpike Lieutenant opens up more doors, so I think that's safer. You're putting a 4-7 on the board instead of a random battle cry, and you're buffing the shop quite a bit. But you can make stuff more awkward, like buying a Rylak from the shop, suddenly the Rylak is gonna have a lot more health. I'm gonna speed ahead a little bit here. Goes for the egg, I do love that, I do love that. This is the kind of confidence picks that sometimes I talk myself out of. But if you look at it, he's Pretty strong, so probably staying fairly healthy. And when he gets tombs online, the egg is going to give him so much value. And that's going to make it easier to push into Murloc. Because then he's going to have so much economy. And even if he ends up playing Beast, the extra money from the from the battle cries is still going to help him hit the uh, you know Goldrins, etc. All right, the opponent has a pretty wide board, but our, uh, excuse me, our uh, Soul Keeper hasn't popped yet. All right, over halfway done with the quest, still full health. This is a fantastic start for ETC. Ooh, Felimental. Oh, but he also got that. Whoa, this is weird. Wow, does not even look at it. Like, demons are in, right? Huh. You're getting a guaranteed Rylak with Tombs. Now, I think the, here, the moment he hits the Primal Fin, 
you're spoiled for choice, right? So when you hit the Primal Fin, you know you're gonna have an amazing Rylak target because that is currently the meta, right? That's one of the most meta things you can do right now. Put a Primal Fin next to a Rylak, farm a lot of Murlocs, buff a Bream, pull up a base skill, get a Coral, yada, yada, yada. You guys have seen it many times. The One of the other very meta things to do is to put a Felimental next to the Rylak. So the fact that he slams the Hero Power button here, uh, but I don't play a ton of ETC. Maybe I just underrate the Hero Power. But I would be um, I would be looking at that Felimental a lot more. So now he's quickly having a look how fast he can get that online. I'm pretty sure that after this combat he gets it. Okay, going to go for the spell to be a little bit stronger. Because right now, Feldrake plus Felimental is super strong. And there is no uh, access to Bramble Witch in this lobby, I believe, right? Because no Quillboard, no Elemental, so... I think I would be leaning towards the Felimental just to have it next to the Rylak, then use the Rylak to buff the shop, get a huge Feldrake, taunt the Feldrake, you use Cultists to resummon, and that's that's super difficult to deal with. Now, Murlocs do get very big, so it's fair to to want to do that. But did we keep our Primal Fin? We did, right? I think so. I might have to look. I have to double check, because if he sold Primal Fin, I'd be very, very surprised. We sold Primal Fin. Whoa. So he doesn't have that as a plan. He doesn't have the uh, idea. Is he just like 100% playing Beast? Because I'm just thinking we get Rylak and, and it's such an insane setup. Oh, Clockwork. <laughs> Clockwork pulling out a Rylak. I think you want to sell... S oh, right. No, that's not. That's the wrong one. <laughs> I'm thinking Zephyrus, buddy. Wait, we sell Clockwork? Wait, what are we doing? <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm so confused. We have Rylak, right? With Tombs. Okay, wow. In my humble opinion, I think that's a mistake, but I don't play a ton of ETC. You were there, RDU you acknowledged it was a misplay? Oh, right, right, right. No, I mean, it's normal, right? I make mistakes all the time, everybody does. And there's a Cleave, so it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> uh, good old Cleave, yeah. Look, he's just playing around the disappointment of the cleave, guys. It's so smart. <laughs> Stomper is a great pick, though. Stomper with the Soul Keeper, Stomper with the Egg is, is so strong here. It's fantastic. <clears throat> but I, I wonder... So, making a mistake, right, is, is one thing, and that's whatever, right? It happens. But for me, what is interesting is understanding what the thought process is that pushes you towards that direction. So I wonder if he sees the tombs and is so like, oh, we're going beast, right? No matter what, because I have a feeling that this primal fin might be skipped again. Yeah, we don't have a murloc anymore. I'm just uh, making a buddy here. Ooh, ticket collector. And it's turn eight, so we just sell it. Yeah, we have to go. Probably make a minion golden just to get uh, chicken and goldren because I'm I'm trying to get a little bit of in, in his thought process, right? Uh, oh, that gives him a ton of money, but that's so hard to do. Oh, you can eat the monstrosity though. He can eat the jailer buddy, but that's kind of hard for board space. So I have a feeling he's just going to eat monstrosity here and then get his money. See if it's uh, Goldrun. He does get the Goldrun, yeah. So I guess for RDU, if he gets Tombs, he's very, very like, oh, it's it's just Beast because it's so strong, which is very fair, right? Beast, oh, Mech Horse, yeah. We, Yeah, I mean, this is super, super strong. I gotta be honest. It's stronger than the Murloc line right now, but I, I would say the Murloc line would have a higher ceiling. But yeah, that that golden uh, that golden minion gives him a lot of value. It's so weird to see a Rylak with tombs get no value though. Oh, there's something wrong about that. <laughs> That's the one thing I can't get over right now, because our quest reward gave us Rylak. But you know, there is something to be said for having the decisiveness, <clears throat> right? Because that is something I do struggle with. Um, some days more than others. It's I have so many ideas of things I could be doing, and because of that, I don't commit early enough. I take too much damage and I'm in a bad position. We can we can look at the potential value lost from this Rylak, but 
The fact of the matter is, he is on tier 6, he's on 33 HP, his board is strong and he has a very clear direction of what to go now. Right, so there is there is definitely upside. Because if he has to keep value for the Rylak, his board is going to be weaker. Now, I think, you know, if RDU looks at that again, he's going to... Yep. <laughs> he's going to agree that it's probably correct. Oh, that's funny. He just appeared, guys. Let me, uh, let me move. Uh, where do I go? I go here? Maybe here. Yeah. I'll go... I'll cut myself off a little bit so you guys can see the timer. Um, so... Here, Fluidity is now a card, so... I would try to keep this Baby off on my board, but that might, again, be the reason why you start taking damage. Oh, Banana. We definitely take Banana, right? We're not rolling past that no matter what. No. <laughs> and I like that he sells the Rylak instead of the Baby off, because at this point we are pushing for that Fluidity so we can use it to, um, to Golden Bananas. But I've spent entire games looking for Fluidity and not hit it. Cleave doesn't hit the Goldrin. Mm, we don't get a lot of Goldrin value now. Are we okay here? Yeah, we have Fettermane as well. Oh, Banana stayed in the hand. Okay, let me see what his board looks like. Because this is something uh, interesting to see. I guess he doesn't get that much value from Banana right now. Well, the Fettermane is big-ish, right? Mm hmm. So that's something interesting to see where we did pay a price for keeping the Nazoth buddy on the board. Well, we didn't, right? But we could have we, we paid a price and we were a lot weaker. Because that was that was holding a, a board slot hostage for the for the banana. It's also interesting to see that he's still valuing the hero power quite highly. Because there is the um like once I know I'm playing beasts and I've already hit the Nazoth buddy, hitting a <clears throat> Hitting a uh, Nathanos is not that great, right? Oh! Oh, that works! Hmm. But that's tough, man. Then he makes random death rattles gold. Um, I feel like you don't want to mess around with that, but I hadn't thought of that. He could have Murkai next to this. Yeah, I like that. I like that skip. Because he would have to get a Surf and Surf and then make a Banana, get a death rattle. I generally buy Chef's Choices when I'm playing... Uh, when I'm playing... Uh, beast. Uh, so we bought Surf and Surf because we're still holding out for Fluidity. Oh. He did hit it. So what he could do, right? For those of you, like, what can he do? <laughs> surf and Surf has a spellcraft that gives a minion death rattle. Baby Nazoth Battlecry says, make a friendly death rattle minion golden. What he can do is play the Surf and Surf, put a death rattle on a banana, then put the Murkai next to the Baby Nazoth. The Murkai can proc and, and make it golden. But that doesn't really make sense. But oh, he is gonna do it. Oh, but he made a golden Titus. Uh, he got away with it. Oh, he sold his uh, mech horse. <sighs> That's pretty counter to how he's been playing so far. But I do get it because it is juicy, huh? So I thought that he would have had to take a 50-50 because I wouldn't really sell my mech horse here. But he's just getting so much value now. All right. All right. Makes sense. I mean, he's on 33. He's on 33. Maybe it was right. He did end up selling the Surf and Surf here. If he finds another Surf and Surf, I'm pretty sure he just does it again, right? Because he can't die and he just makes more Golden Banana. This does seem like there was an opportunity to get even greedier if you're going to do this line, but yeah, bananas makes sense. I think I wouldn't have gone for it. I, I would have probably gone for keeping the mech horse. Um, but this was obviously very nice. It gets the uh, the Golden Titus now. But I, the reason why I think it's interesting is that it's pretty contrary to how he's played so far. I think he's played... Uh, pretty like, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be pretty <clears throat> straightforward. I'm going to keep a strong board. But yeah, keeping the Surf and Surf instead of the Secret Minion would have been better. But I mean, 
the fact that he did it and pulled it off, right, and didn't take damage is already really, really good. Because the most important thing is here, right? He has two Banana Slammas and he has two Fetter Mains in his hand. So even though he doesn't have the Mech Horse, his board is way stronger than it looks. Because he gets, he gets a very big return from uh, summoning these things. You would have sold Feathermane and kept Surf and Horse. Yeah, but if you keep Mech Horse, then your Mech Horse will become golden. Right? So, honestly, when I look back at the situation, especially on 33 HP, I think his play is better than what I would have done. But I do think that he, he also would have liked to keep the Surf and Surf with this line. But of course... We are using some hindsight here, right? Because he knows now that he's full HP. That's just one turn. You make everything go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't think that way. In Battlegrounds, that's just one turn. You make everything golden. Just wait five turns and surf and surf everything over five turns. There's no fucking way that he's going to keep the Nazoth buddy and the surf and surf. There's no way you're keeping those three for like four or five turns to golden everything there's no way but i do i do think that he would have liked to have kept the surf and surf with the play where you sell the mech horse yeah but i think it's a strong it's it's a good it's good to see this essentially it's good to see that even though i guess i have a natural aversion to plays that feel a little bit too risky to me but you have to be um if, if you look at the facts of like, okay, what's the worst thing that's going to happen there if he doesn't have that mech horse? The worst thing is that he's not going to be in damage cap and he will have a golden Titus or a golden banana farmed. And over the course of two or three turns, oh, nice. Two or three turns, that is going to be stronger than um, just keeping your mech horse there. So it's almost like I would have played too defensive too early. Oh, we sold? What do we sell? All right. Right, he's thinking I'm not keeping... Yeah, that makes sense, actually. He's not going to keep that combo anyway. And this way he has board space for the Fetamines. That makes total sense. Yeah. He would have been way too scared to sell the Mech Horse. Yeah, but I, the more I look at it, the more I think it was just correct. Because when he has... He went for Golden Titan instead of Golden Banana. I, I usually go for Golden Banana because you literally can't have too many Golden Bananas. <laughs> You can run four golden bananas. That's good. So I would say that's that's my criticism there. I would have I would have gone for golden banana because, hey man, four golden bananas. I guess I'll have to run four golden bananas. You know, like, oh, what am I gonna do? Whereas golden Titus, you're kind of happy just having one, right? So I think I would have made both bananas golden and then just naturally rolled two more Titus. And if I don't roll more Titus, whatever. But my point is that he's actually a lot stronger than it looks because he has the feather veins. He has the Fetter Mains with the Golden Goldren and then Titus and then either Golden Titus or Golden Banana. So it yeah, that, that was a really uh, it was a cool it was a cool play. Alright. Found another reborn. This is interesting. I guess we have to keep the sewer out, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> the one problem here now is that he might run into a situation where the banana dies before any other beast dies because the gold run reborns and there's no board space. Oh, okay. Nice. Dude, a 313? That's kind of insulting. <laughs> That's kind of insulting to be honest. You play a 313 on turn 13 and be like, oh, maybe it kills something. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Wow. This is so satisfying when it goes off. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, right, he has tombs. I almost forgot, yeah. Get wrecked. Well, there definitely was a far more complicated path with the Rylak here, but honestly, there is no, that, that's actually a really good attribute. The ability to simplify when, when possible. Essentially what RDU did here was say, you know what, I have tombs, I'm just gonna play Beast. And that worked out really well.